Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. We're going to talk today about the fragile ego of the narcissist and their inability to handle any kind of feedback or criticism. And we're going to talk about some of the tactics that they employ. We'll give some examples. Um, real quick before we get into it, I want to preface this by saying I am obviously not a mental health professional. I'm not trying to make any diagnoses or speak uh, as if I have any type of like authority. I'm not an expert or anything like that. I'm simply somebody who has personal experience um, growing up with a narcissistic parent. And um, I have, so through my experience, I've done my own research and I have my own thoughts on it. And that's simply all I'm giving you is just my opinion. So keep that in mind. Um, as we go through this, I want people to know I'm not trying to misrepresent myself here. Now, I have prepared some notes that I'm going to be referencing and then I'll comment on that. And I'm doing that because I want to stay focused. I've noticed that if I don't have a, something, you know, that I stick to some bullet points, I'll tend to ramble. And sometimes um, I even repeat myself because I forget that I already covered something. So it just helps me stay organized and focused. So if I look like I'm reading off something, that's what, I, what I'm doing. I'm, I'm referencing my notes. So we're going to try to keep this organized. All right. So let's go ahead and begin by talking about the fragile ego of the narcissist. The fragile ego of the narcissist is characterized by a deep-seated vulnerability masked by a facade of superiority, driven by an intense need for admiration, validation, attention. They often seek external validation to validate their own self-worth. Now, this is because they have a very fragile sense of identity Paradoxically, any perceived criticism or threat to their self-image can trigger a disproportionate emotional response. Um, anyone who has dealt with a narcissist knows you could say one small thing and they may react with this intense rage. You know, it's kind of, um, it, it's called narcissistic injury, narcissistic rage but it's, it's very disproportionate to the situation. Uh, the fragility lies in the delicate balance between maintaining this false, grandiose self-perception and then this um, fear of being exposed. Uh, despite projecting confidence, narcissist egos remain very uh, fragile, very brittle, and it's reliant on constant affirmation uh, from others to shield against these underlying insecurities that actually drive a lot of their behaviors. And um, I tend to believe that narcissism is uh, a defense mechanism. I think it's, uh, and I've said this before in other videos I've done talking about narcissism. This is, again, just my opinion. Uh, I believe it's a defense mechanism that is developed uh, they're, it's like a coping mechanism developed very early in life uh, in response to trauma. That's my opinion, that sometimes kids have very traumatic childhoods, and at that vulnerable stage, they, in order to survive that, they may develop narcissistic traits as a defense mechanism and coping mechanism. And so that's how I see it. Um, so that's what we're going to be talking about. Now, NPD, narcissistic personality disorder, is characterized by a pervasive pattern of grandiosity, a constant need for admiration, and a lack of empathy. One prominent aspect of this trait is the fragility of the narcissist's self-esteem, which becomes especially pronounced when they are confronted with any kind of feedback or criticism. And it doesn't even have to be negative. They, ca they can even be resistant to positive feedback. Like, for example, if you're, have you, and if you've had experience with narcissists, you know, if you try to give them advice, like to help them, they may perceive that as an attack on them and their ego that like, 
you didn't know that they were superior and they didn't need that advice. They know better than you. Like, how dare you think that they need you to tell them what to do? And you're just trying to help. You're just trying to give them advice and help, but that's how they perceive it, right? Uh, okay, so um, the fragile uh, self-esteem of the narcissist. Narcissists construct this grandiose self-image to shield themselves from underlying feelings of being inadequate. They don't think that they're good enough. They have a very uh, negative self-perceptions. And so they're constantly trying to cover for that and maintain this false facade. A lot of times, um, if you look at their social media, narcissists will constantly be posting about how wonderful and great their life is. Oh, here they're out uh, on this fancy plane, or here they're at this fancy party. Oh, look at how much fun they're having. They're showing off. You know, th it's because they need the likes. They need the attention. They need to know people are watching them and, and buy into this um, grandiose uh, image that they're trying to project. Uh, any form of criticism that threatens that carefully crafted facade um, and threatens to expose their vulnerability hidden beneath, they react very badly to. So they rely heavily, obviously, on external validation to maintain their self-esteem, and this makes them sensitive to feedback that challenges their perceptions of themselves. So again, you can give them positive feedback and they can still perceive that as an attack on them and react with vitriol and rage. Um, now, feedback and criticism are perceived as threats to their grandiose self-concept rather than viewing constructive criticism uh, as an opportunity to like learn something, to self-reflect, uh, to grow as a person, they interpret this as an attack on like their core identity. And this is because they have such a fragile core identity to begin with. They have a very fragile sense of self. They don't know who they are. They're constantly mirroring other people. Um, and so this is a defense response that could that probably stems from their inability to differentiate between the person and the behavior that's being criticized like instead of recognizing that you're you're not personally attacking them you're saying i don't like it when you uh do this you know and exhibit this uh, abusive behavior they instead see this as like you criticizing them as a person they don't i don't think they have the ability to differentiate between like we're not criticizing the person we're criticizing the behaviors and you'll notice too that when they when they're mad at you and they're uh lashing out at you they don't criticize the your behaviors it is nasty they're venomous snakes you know they are silver-tongued they will tear into you tear you apart and it's always a personal like they try to press your emotional buttons and get under your skin um now narcissists struggle with emotional regulation i think that's obvious amplifying their negative reactions to feedback their emotional dysregulation may be linked to heightened fears of rejection and abandonment um it, this may come from things that happened to them in, in the past as children, like very early childhood experiences of being rejected or abandoned by parents or somebody that was supposed to love them and, and protect them. So they're like hypersensitive to those things, leading them to employ these defense mechanisms such as denial, projection, or rage to protect that fragile ego, which is really, in my opinion, like a, a fragile child inside you know and you'll kind of notice like an emotional stuntedness about them where they really do kind of seem like it feels like you're dealing with a petulant child at times instead of a mature um adult um 
Now, they also have uh, a, another thing that I, I want to bring out with this also um, and this lack of emotional regulation is one of the things you may notice if when you're dealing with a narcissist is this like hypersensitivity to um, anything that is per, like a negative thing. So, for example, you could be having a conversation with them and maybe you tell them 10 positive things, you know, where you build them up and say, you're awesome at this, you compliment them and say, oh, you're so great at all these things, but there's this one, you know, area where I think you could use some improvement and here's where I think you could use improvement. Like th they interpret this in a completely different way. They will hone in on that one thing you said that they perceive to be negative, even if it wasn't you saying, hey, this is a weakness or saying something negative about them, but just saying, here's an area where you could improve, like they, hyper fixate on that perceived negative thing and they take that as like a slight against them and they they feel offended by this like a personal attack or something so where you think you've given them like a bunch of compliments and that you're you're trying to help them and you see that is what happened they don't perceive that as what happened they perceived it as you attacking them and you're like what it's this disproportionate and bizarre response and you you'll notice this with them repeatedly it's this constant fixation on the negative of things where they're they don't see the positive they don't see their blessings you know they they're they constantly think the grass is greener and they always have to learn the hard way that it's not it's this um yeah i think that's part of you know their their biases towards like the negative and their hypersensitivity to any perceived slight against them even if it isn't a slight and you're simply saying here is an area where you could improve they don't take it that way and they don't like it uh, it is a cognitive bias in processing their feedback they're prone to selectively attending to information that confirms their pre-existing beliefs also while dismissing or distorting contrary evidence because they always have to be right. Anything that confirms what they already believe is a that's true. Anything that goes against that, they just dismiss or they'll twist it and they'll somehow make it so that it's not true. And that reinforces their uh, grandiose self-image and it hinders their ability to accept constructive criticism. They go into this black and white thinking as well. Now, some of the, uh, here we'll go into some examples. So some of the tactics that they'll use, denial and deflection. An example of this, they say, I don't know what you're talking about. You must be misunderstanding. I'm always right. And this feedback you're giving me, this criticism is just nonsense. So rather than actually like address any of the argument that you made, they will just dismiss, deflect, you know? They, they don't address any of the points. They just say, that's nonsense. I'm right. You're wrong. Uh, projection of blame, for example, they might say, you're the one who messed up, not me. If you had done things properly, we wouldn't be having this conversation right now. So you're the bad guy, not them. Or like, you know, I didn't want to hit you. You made me do that. And I can't believe I didn't want to. Do it hurts me that I had to do that. I can't believe you did that to me. I didn't want to do it. Like you're the you made them abuse you. You know, like this is the kind of things that they'll do minimization of feedback for example they might say why are you making such a big deal of this it's not that important you're just trying to find faults where there aren't any you're just nitpicking you're just being neurotic you know they minimize any feedback because they they can never take it they will never acknowledge anything you're saying they're not going to self-reflect they're not going to go oh you know what I think you might have been right. And actually, I've taken some time to think about the points that you made. And, you know, this is where I think maybe you're right. And but this is where I think that you're wrong. They don't do stuff like that. Um, counter criticism. Another example, they might say something like, well, you're no better. In fact, you're worse. Why don't we talk about all the things you've done wrong before you come after me? 
So they, instead of addressing your criticism, they'll just counter criticize you. And it's interesting too, because in a video I had recently done about a, a woman um, named Diane from a, a channel called Estranged Parents, there are, are a lot of people, people, for potentially bots uh, in the comments who I've never seen before don't recognize, but they're using all of these tactics in the comments. And so you'll, you'll see that, oh, you know, they try to twist scripture. And when Christ talked about removing the plank in your own eye before judging another, it, it's just to all to say, you cannot criticize this person. They are above being criticized. They're above any kind of constructive feedback. Uh, how dare you try to help them, right? They uh, will use sarcasm and mockery. For example, they might say something like, oh, great, constructive criticism, advice. I'm so lucky to have someone like you just pointing out all my flaws. Your insights are truly enlightening. Look at you, aren't you an expert? You know, when you try to talk to them about how you think that they are maybe a narcissist and are abusive and then they say oh now you're all of a sudden an armchair expert oh now you can diagnose me you know they they get very snotty like that and angry outbursts for example they might yell angrily at you and get very aggressive and say how dare you criticize me you have no right to question anything i do you're pathetic this is absurd They'll use things uh, like employing manipulation tactics like withdrawal of affection, silent treatment. Um, they can act very cold and aloof and say, fine, if that's how you feel, I don't need to hear this. I'll just keep to myself from now on. I just won't bother you. <laughs> uh, dismissing of the critic, for example, they might say, who asked for your opinion anyway? Your criticism, your feedback, your advice means nothing to me. I don't value what you think. What makes you think that your opinion matters? <laughs> you know, like they, they have a, an answer for everything. And, and these reactions illustrate like the defense mechanisms they use to to prevent themselves from having to do any self-reflection, to take any accountability for their actions or to do any kind of like uh, work on themselves like they don't do self-improvement work um, and so it's often these responses show not only do they take no uh, responsibility or or accountability but they will lash out with rage vitriol they'll be overly aggressive and hostile all to protect their ego and they have no regard uh, for the person who is trying to give them the feedback that may in fact be trying to help them. Uh, narcissists can use things like social media platforms to do things like execute smear campaigns or mobilize their followers against their critics. This is a big thing. Um, look at celebrities, right? So they'll, they can try things like character assassination. They could use social media to try to publicly tarnish the reputation of the person who uh, criticized them or gave them, you know, feedback they didn't like. This could involve spreading false information about that individual, uh, sharing exaggerated negative experiences or highlighting any perceived flaws or mistakes, but it not addressing the validity of the criticism itself. Um, they could, you know, create persuasive narratives. They might um, use, uh, make posts at certain times to maximize visibility. They might try to tag you on social media. Um, they might try to uh, hijack certain algorithms in order to do these campaigns. They use gaslighting um, to, to manipulate perceptions. And they might do that to try to make their critics doubt their own judgment and feel like, oh, maybe I, I'm wrong. Maybe I made a mistake. Uh, that This involves denying wrongdoing, twisting facts, portraying themselves as the victim, which they always are. Uh, they might use 
social media to create confusion and cast doubt on the validity of criticism. And they might recruit allies to do this. Now, I talked about uh, in the video I put out yesterday, the fact that I, I thought that there was inauthentic bot activity um, that I was witnessing because I did a video that may or may not have criticized an alleged narcissist <laughs> who also uses social media and may or may not have a lot of resources at their disposal. Uh, but to bolster their position, they might seek support from like-minded individuals um, on social media. Now, uh, they... Uh, will rally people to defend them, framing the person who is giving them constructive criticism or feedback as like a oh, bad person and, and trying to organize like mob mentality to uh, or orchestrate and organize collective attacks on their critics. Um, they do things like selective presentation of information. They carefully curate the information that they share online to present a biased version of events that favors them. Um, they might highlight certain achievements while downplaying their mistakes, selectively sharing only information that supports their narrative, creating a distorted public image. For example, if there was a maybe a mother and daughter who had a falling out and the mother is in constant competition with the daughter and the daughter may have social media followers online that she's talked to about her decision not to talk to the mother. So perhaps the mother feels the need to uh, put out information where she does not address certain things. She hides certain information and she creates her own, she tells her story and says, oh, really? Well, here's my side of it, right? Uh, public shaming. They may, narcissists may use social media to publicly shame the person who criticized them or gave them feedback and try to make that person feel isolated or unwelcome. They might have, you know, they have enablers, they have flying monkeys. They might say, hey, go, go comment on this person's video. Go post a bunch of comments and try to make that person doubt themselves or make that person feel bad. Um, they might encourage their followers to engage in things like online harassment um, and things like this. Uh, they may retaliate through fake accounts. A lot, of, a lot of these narcissists that utilize social media, they have multiple fake accounts they use to attack people. Um, they engage in online trolling, spreading rumors contributing to negative atmosphere without revealing who they are. They may be commenting on a video that you did about them under a, uh, a fake name so that you don't know it's them, but here they are seething and raging against you. Um, so uh, that's how they can use social media to manipulate people. Uh, and all of this, again, is it all stems from the narcissist inability to handle feedback and criticism, which is because they have such fragile self-esteem and self-image that they have these defense mechanisms to protect their grandiosity. And this is how it comes out uh, in very negative ways at times. And so um, I'm going to include in the video description, some references for you guys if you want to learn more information about this. I'm going to include sources um, that I found helpful that hopefully can help you guys as well. And I'm interested to hear your experience with this. Have you guys, do you, have you have any narcissists in your family or have you had any that you've had to be around where you've experienced their inability to handle any type of feedback, criticism, or even advice um, and how did, how did you handle that? Uh, anyways, that's it for now. Have a good day.